Hello there, I'm Borno, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video we're going to be comparing the rates of E2 elimination reactions. Interesting. Stay tuned. So in this problem, we are asked to compare the rate of these two reactions. You should be able to ans answer this question if you have learned the E1, E2, um, SN1, SN2 chapter. So go ahead and give it a try and we'll be back in a few seconds to go over the solution. All right, so first of all, it's obvious that these reactions are gonna be E2, right? So we have secondary substrates, a secondary alkyl halide in both cases, and we are combining that with a strong bulky base. So there is no opportunity for any other kind of reaction. And this is on a cyclohexane. Now, let me um, briefly explain something. Previously, I did a video on conversion of cyclohexanes to chair conformations. I'm going to put a link to that. Um, but in order for a leaving group on a uh, chair conformation of a cyclohexane to be able to undergo elimination, it needs to be axial. Because in order for a leaving group to be able to do E2 elimination, it needs to be anti coplanar with the hydrogen. And the only way that can happen is. Um, the leaving group has to be axial and it has to have an axial adjacent hydrogen. Under these conditions, this is going to undergo an E2 elimination. Now, let's see what the situation is with our two compounds. I'm going to call them um, A and B. So, let's see what the situation is with compound A. So, I'm going to copy that structure and paste it down here. Um, so, let's convert this to a chair confirmation. It appears that one of the chair conformations is going to look like this and the other chair conformation is going to look like this it's going to have the bromine in the equatorial position t butyl in the axial position now um, let's do the same analysis for compound b and then we can compare them okay so for compound b this is what we have so um, one of the chair conformations is going to have both bromine and t-butyl in the equatorial position and the other is going to have both of them in the axial position. All right, so let's first of all figure out which one of these two conformations for each compound is going to be more stable. Obviously, because of the fact that t-butyl is so large of a group, it's important for that to be equatorial. It's much bigger than bromine, so it's much more of a concern for that to be in the equatorial position. So obviously, this is the more stable conformation for this compound and this is the more stable conformation for compound B, meaning that at any given time, out of every 100 molecules, and I'm like making up these numbers, but it's something of this order, say 99% of our molecules are in that conformation, 1% of molecules are in that conformation, and for B, say 99% are in this conformation, 1% are in this conformation. Okay, now let's see which one of these two conformations is more reactive. Obviously, we need to have as I said, our bromine, our leaving group in the axial position for um, E2 elimination to be possible. And I'm gonna highlight the more reactive conformation red. As you can see for A, this is the more reactive conformation. And for B, this is the more reactive conformation. In other words, at any given moment for A, 99% of our molecules are in the reactive conformation. And again, I'm making up these numbers, but it's something close to that. And for B, 1% of our molecules are in the reactive conformation. So effectively, for B, the concentration of the reactive molecules is much lower than A. So A is going to go, uh, A is going to undergo the E2 elimination much faster. Faster. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. That's going to help me a lot. Also, subscribe to this channel to see more tutorials, solve problems, and tips and tricks. Check out my website at eurochemtutor.com and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.